Hello everybody, Bishop Cecchio here. Thanks for taking the time to listen today about this year's Bishop's Annual Appeal. Throughout the United States this year, we've begun a movement, a Eucharistic revival. And the purpose of it is to help people's understanding of the Eucharist in our lives, to promote devotion to the Eucharist in our lives. The Eucharist does so much for us. It heals us, it restores us to God's grace, it strengthens us, and it also sends us on mission, sharing Christ's presence in the world through our acts of charity. And that's what this year's appeal is named, renewed and sent on mission by the Eucharist. I love going to visit our parishes and seeing your devotion to the Eucharist at Mass, uh, your devotion to adoration, your devotion to the pastoral charity, the good works that come from your being a disciple of Jesus. So thank you for all you do. Thank you for your persevering and your commitment to the faith and also for your making the faith present throughout our world by your works of charity. Your helps need it now as much as ever. So I ask you to please be as generous as you can this year as we honor the Eucharist and as we are sent on mission uh, by that Eucharist to join in this great moment of service. Catholic Charities, you know, is a great recipient of, our, of, of, your, of your good works, of the DAS and efforts, uh, assisting the poor, assisting, the, assisting those who need help, especially with counseling, uh, teaching home skills to young mothers, uh, especially unwed young mothers who come to us for help. The food pantry, at, in New Brunswick. And they were telling me that from the beginning of the pandemic until now, the amount of people coming for help has tripled. That's a great increase, huh? Between the pandemic, between Hurricane Ida, between inflation, all the different things that have hurt so many. And sadly, even more recently with the inflation issues, uh, it's more elderly people coming for help. As a ministry of the diocese, we participate in the church's social mission by recognizing the dignity and the worth of all people, regardless of their faith, their ethnicity, and income. Donations to Catholic Charities are so vital to the work we do. Your dollars support our mission-driven programs, providing food, shelter, and emotional counseling support to the clients we serve. These clients are often poor, devalued, and marginalized in our society and really need your help and support. Last year alone, we served over 63,000 individuals throughout all our services. That equates to about 113,000 hours of direct service to clients. More than 15,000 households received bags of food. Just in New Brunswick alone, we gave out over 193,000 pounds of food. We gave almost $600,000 to rental assistance for clients who couldn't afford to rent. I just want to tell you, your donations are highly appreciated by the clients that we serve. And for those of us who provide the service, we really, really greatly appreciate you and your deeds. The Peel supports our seminarians. You know, we're so blessed uh, with a good number of seminarians. You know, it's, it's nice to have almost two dozen seminarians in our diocese. Uh, hopefully soon through your prayer and efforts, we'll have even more, huh? but I need to pay for these seminarians now. Uh, as you know, the formation's quite expensive. Uh, any of you that have sent children or grandchildren to college, uh, you know the expenses are enormous and healthcare for the seminarians. So I ask you to be generous. It's the most seminarians we've had in 25 years. Uh, and also with inflation, it's the highest bill we ever had for seminarians. So please uh, support this effort so we have enough shepherds for our parishes for the future. Jose has been a wonderful addition. He is a joy to have around, and it's nice to see young people in the altar. After college, I was wondering what God had in store for my life. I had a lot of questions, a lot of friends of mine were doing the same thing, and the more I worked with the sick and the dying, the elderly, that's really kind of where I found my calling, and it eventually led me to I have to start thinking about if God wants me to enter seminary. And so that was actually one of the harder decisions of my life, deciding to give up nursing so that I could work for God in a different way. I feel like he had encouraged me to pray more, especially for vocations for the priesthood, because I used to pray a lot, but now I pray more because of him. It's funny, I left the hospital and 
went halfway across the world to Italy for studies just for God to bring me all the way back to the hospital bed, which is pretty amazing. So when the bishop had asked me to start working in a hospital again, it kind of felt like a perfect fit. I think it's important to support vocations of priests because it's the new beginning of the church because we have so much trouble in the past and this is like a new beginning. The appeal really allows us to enter into the studies, enter into the prayer, enter into the relationships and all the things that are necessary for me to be formed to be a priest without any type of anxiety or worry. Knowing that the people of God are behind us, that they're supporting us, they're praying for us, and they're keeping us every single day in their hearts. And so the appeal is simply a exercise of that love from the people of the diocese. As you know, the Bishop's Appeal also goes to support uh, the good work of our chaplains at both our hospitals and our prisons. Uh, we have almost a dozen priests working in those ministries that are funded through this. Uh, their salaries and their health care and their pension, everything is paid through the uh, Bishop's Annual Appeal. And it's so important, as you know, uh, we all hope we never need their services, uh, but we'll be glad if they're there in our hour of need. So thanks for your generosity in supporting our, our prison chaplains and our hospital chaplains. Uh, COVID has taught us so much about the need for this ministry and the importance of it. And uh, certainly your giving to support that is a, a great blessing. Nobody wants to go to a hospital. <laughs> and nobody wants to go to a prison. They're very frightening, lonely, scary places. I've had a very exciting, enjoyable, fruitful 35 years of priestly ministry here in hospitals and prisons. I enjoyed my ministry for the first 15 months. I was very effective in it, very pastoral, very caring to people. And then I lost my dad very tragically. My father, many of you know the diocese, was murdered in St. Pat Cathedral by a deranged homeless man in St. Pat Cathedral in New York City. It had a profound impact upon my life and my ministry and my family. Because when you've been through trauma or pain, you understand people's pain a lot better. And I learned from that tragedy, the ability to just be with people, to minister them just by being there. What's more important is the presence. And the Catholic Church is with people at very difficult, painful times. And the hospital chaplain needs to be there with people in moments of great pain, great sorrow, great loss. And my personal pain has not made me bitter, but maybe better. There's about 12 hospital chaplains like myself who minister these hospitals to patients 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year. I feel very strongly the Catholic Church needs a very strong presence in these prisons. Yes, the murderers, the drug addicts, the rapists, those are the people we minister to. And I know these people by name. And I truly believe that Christ wants all to be compassionate and caring for these men and women in prison. And I'm honored to say that Father Bob Gorm and I take care of all the prisoners in our diocese as best we can. The money goes to where it's supposed to go to help, to support our hospital ministry, support our prison ministry, and most especially, to help people in pain. Because of Bishop Cecchio in this appeal, the Catholic Church is represented in prison ministry. But I'm telling you, in this world we live in today, your gift to the Bishop's Appeal enables us, we priests who are chaplains, who do very important pastoral ministry. The Church is not just the Vatican in Rome, or St. Francis Cathedral in Metuchen, or a chapel here at St. Peter's Hospital. The Church is us, the people of God. The Eucharist renewed and sent on mission this year's appeal during this great moment of our country's Eucharistic revival. We ask you to dig as deep as you can, and I know you have, and, and I'm so grateful to you for that. I ask also that everybody participates 
no matter how small, no matter how little you're able to give, if it's given with love, we know that God blesses it greatly. So everyone, please give something, huh? Know of my love for you, my prayers for you, my gratitude for you. Uh, I rest so well knowing that I'm on this journey with you uh, because I know you respond so well uh, whenever the needs are presented to you. So my heartfelt love and gratitude to you. And I ask God to bless you all abundantly. And we ask our mother Mary uh, to send her mantle over us to give us our protection. God bless you all and all those that will help thanks to your generosity to this year's Bishop's Appeal.